broadly speaking, there are two ways to address a social problem. One way is institutional. In this case, some kind of institutional reform will be necessary. Most importantly, the astonishingly low salaries of public officials have to be brought up to a level commensurate with their responsibilities, which will then make it easier for them to resist bribes. However, such reforms will not by themselves solve the underlying problem, which is the culture of monetizing power. Institutional remedies can help, but what's really needed is a radical transformation in culture. So, how exactly do we go about changing a culture? Confucius had a simple answer. Start from the top. Uh, see this uh, exchange uh, from the Analex? Lord Chi asked, I am worried about the thieves in the state. How do I bring them under control? Confucius replied, if your highness were not greedy, people would not steal even if you rewarded them for doing so. Okay. Can you feel the power of this short exchange? Basically, Confucius is telling Lord Chi straight to his face, there are many thieves in our country because you, sir, are greedy. I cannot help admiring his courage in confronting his ruler this way. Imagine a modern day professor of Beijing University scolding the seven members of the Standing Committee of the Politburo. If you guys actually cleaned up your own acts, which senior official would dare not follow? If senior officials cleaned up their acts, which junior official would dare not follow? So far, the party has tried to deal with the issue of graft through education and prosecution. Such efforts have all fallen flat. When officials know that graft begins at the very top, how can they take education or prosecution seriously? Eradicating corruption is not difficult. If the party leaders practiced what they preach, the rank and file will naturally fall in line. The whole purpose of Confucianism was to create moral leaders so that their civic virtue would permeate the entire society. Confucians did not worry too much about institution building per se, because in the end, it is people who manage the system. To the Confucians, morality of the people who manage the system mattered more than the system itself. See how Xin Si beautifully summarizes the idea there is no such thing as a disorderly system of state. Only disorderly rulers exist. There is no such thing as an orderly system of law. Only orderly citizens exist. It is time that we shifted our focus from democratic institution building to the moral quality of leadership. Democracy is not an end in itself. It's just a means of putting the right leaders in charge. And as you guys in Singapore <laughs> demonstrate, there are other ways of achieving the same goal. What matters is not popular mandate per se, but having honest and selfless leaders. If you don't have honest and selfless leaders, if your leaders are dishonest and selfish, then it doesn't matter whether you've got a democracy or a dictatorship, you are finished. 
How many times have we seen a democratic movement turn to tears when the elected leaders turned out to be incompetent, corrupt, or both? What happened to the Orange Revolution? What happened to the Tarrio Square? What about the last election in Venezuela? On the other hand, if the Chinese Communist Party does produce honest and selfless leaders, then the Chinese people will be only too happy to acknowledge its mandate. 